Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Dino Ablakovic. I'm a solutions director for microgrids at GE Vernova. Uh, for those unfamiliar, GE Vernova is a new spin off company of GE General Electric. It basically integrates about a third of what GE used to be uh, with 80,000 people and all energy businesses, including electrification, power, and wind. Now, I've personally done microgrids for about 10 years since, as someone said here earlier, since before hydrogen was sexy, which means um, we have done this whole path of getting from pilot projects to standard market, standard projects. And I'm here to talk to you about how and what microgrids and hydrogen plants have in common and sp specifically about one type of microgrid and hydrogen plant, which is DC coupled hydrogen plant. So, so what is a microgrid? Um, so per definition, a uh, microgrid is a group of interconnected loads and decentralized energy resources, essentially generation, uh, which have clearly defined ba electrical boundaries and act as a single entity in regards to the grid. Uh, microgrids can be on-grid, they can be off-grid, and they can transition between these two states. Um, some microgrids are always off-grid. Um, microgrids, even though the, the name means micro, so something very small, can actually be very large. They can go into hundreds of megawatts, even gigawatts, in which case we are talking about a microgrid cluster. Um, microgrids integrate all, all types of generation, going from conventional gas, diesel, biomass, to the renewables, wind, PV, batteries, and also electrolyzers and fuel cells. And in a case where we have a hydrogen plant with integrated power generation as a whole, we are talking about the microgrid hydrogen plant. Um, having done so many projects over the years, we've learned that um, most microgrids, uh, most microgrid customers are driven by three main factors. Uh, primary, it's resilience, being able to run independent of the grid. Then it's economics, trying to lower the, the price of energy and sustainability, reducing the, the emissions. Um, but one important thing that we've learned is that all microgrids are different. All microgrid projects are different. So this is why uh, we have also developed an internal tool and we use simulation and techno-economic studies to design and model microgrids. And we have been doing this for years. Uh, we have seen a number of presentations here about how hydrogen plants are simulated. We have done this with microgrids uh, long before. And we do this by uh, entering all of the technical input parameters all of all of the assets. We model different energy mix. Uh, and we also enter the financial parameters, everything from CAPEX, OPEX, fuel costs, energy costs, even the revenue, uh, and uh, we run the simulation. We also use time series data, so if there are some measurements coming from the field, but also weather forecasts such as solar and, and wind forecast. Everything goes into the optimization tool, and the output is technical and uh, economic KPIs, essentially getting to the CAPEX, OPEX, uh, and LCOE. Now, as we know, LCOE is, is always the major part of the LCOH. So with the hydrogen in the mix or with the electrolyzers in the mix, we are able also to come to the, to the LCOH. Um, one thing uh, that is important is um, as an OEM, we always suggest to the potential customers that it is important to engage with OEMs even in these early stages because we are the ones who know our equipment the best. We have the most detailed models and we know how the asset will actually behave in the field. Um, now, uh, one thing that we have seen, for example, is when doing these studies and simulating different scenarios, 
there is a reverse dependency between the CAPEX uh, and the LCOE. And this is, this is always in a discussion uh, when planning for hydrogen projects. How large is the CAPEX? How low can the LCOE and with that LCOH come? And finding that sweet spot in between the optimal solution is always somewhere on the intersection. Now, there are types of studies that are actually, that we see in, in hydrogen projects are often disregarded, especially in the early stages, and those are the power system studies. Um, those are, include everything from steady state modeling, uh, power flow or load flow study, cable sizing, short circuit, transient stability studies, um, voltage stability, all of these have to be done in the course of the pre-feed and feed at some point in time. Uh, what we have seen is that they also can have a large influence on the LCOE and LCOH. Typically, a battery sizing is, is an issue. Uh, it's often underestimated. So we do this iteratively, starting with the study and at, at early stages at some higher level and then moving into more detailed levels. Uh, now, in terms uh, of the other topic, so when we see uh, a, a typical design of, of a hydrogen plant which has integrated renewables, whether it's completely off-grid or connected to, to some weak grid, uh, it is pretty much centralized. We have PV on one side, we have wind on another side, we have electrolyzer plant as a separate with the BOP, uh, and the batteries also. Uh, we have, as you can see here, um, different, a lot of power conversion, a lot of the power converters and rectifiers, and different voltage levels, going all the way from low voltage uh, to 66 kV and even higher to, to 275. Um, so when we have a, a constellation like this, uh, and the grid is not there or it's weak, this plant has to have uh, typical microgrid functions. It has to be able to do black start, it has to have grid forming, it has to do reserve management, has to have load shedding, even sometimes generation shedding and so on. These are all typical microgrid functions that we have done for years. So we are indeed talking about the microgrid hydrogen plants. There is another thing, uh, when you look at uh, the mid-level of the slide, you see we are talking about all DC sources of energy. PV is a direct current DC source, electrolyzer as well, batteries are also DC. It's only a logical question, can we connect them directly in some way? And yes, we can. So one of the innovative designs that we are proposing um, is a decentralized and DC coupled hydrogen plant in which instead of using DC-AC conversion then different transformations to, to higher voltage levels and then all the way back to lower voltage levels from AC to DC we can actually connect them on the DC side. They still have um, different DC voltage levels so we need DC-DC converters. As a matter of fact, uh, GV was the first company who introduced the um, uh, 1500 volt central PV inverter. And that was in 2012. And back then, uh, going from 1000 volt to 1500 volt meant a reduction in current of some 30%. Uh, and that practically means being able to do, connect more strings, reducing the amount of cabling, combiner boxes, um, uh, fuses, switch gear, and so on. So significant reduction in the capex. Uh, and then the industry took actually two to three years to develop all of the subsequent um, equipment at that voltage level. Even the standards had to be updated. And now this is state of the art. So what we have done then, we have implemented hybrid plants where we have PV and batteries connected on the DC side. 
Um, and now we are talking about connecting electrolyzer on a DC side, plugging them into that, that hybrid plant. Obviously, when we are talking about the larger scale projects, those have to be modularized. Um, they have to be modular for, for so many reasons, but um, the, the primary benefit of having a, a DC coupled um, design is really the reduction in capex and opex or maintenance costs. So having smaller number of converters means smaller maintenance. Um, it also means higher efficiency because you don't have to go through the whole conversion process. Smaller number of transformers, smaller number of, of switch gear. Um, and when you look at the difference in size of AC, DC, and DC, DC converters, you will see there is a significant difference in the footprint. So we see this being implemented in a number of different use cases, one of them being the decentralized offshore with uh, offshore wind, where uh, electrolyzers are then coupled directly only with batteries. Obviously, offshore we don't have, we don't have PV. Um, and then additionally to that, we may have an onshore setup where we have a DC coupled solar with um, the electrolyzer and the battery on a DC side. Um, this can be, as I've mentioned, connected or disconnected to the grid. There are some challenges to this design which need to be evaluated uh, for each single project. And uh, we know that the balance of plant with this modular design and integration within the generation has to be granular, which is challenging for, for many developers, and uh, water supply as well. Um, but this is something that is a trade-off between, between the two. Um, this slide shows uh, our portfolio of rectifiers. We have basically a full line of different rectifiers going all the way to 20 megawatt. We have thyristor-based, IGBT-based, uh, converters, air-cooled, water-cooled, different voltage levels. Um, and um, on the lower right side, uh, you can see a, a multi-port converter, which actually integrates DC-DC, um, DC-AC, AC-DC conversion one, where the converter modules are connected via central DC bus bar, hence reducing the footprint reducing the, the, the cabling uh, and essentially also maintenance because it is all packed in one. Um, finally, uh, going back to the start of my presentation about the, how simulation and, and the studies are important, uh, one other important thing that we always like to emphasize is the energy management system. This is also often disregarded because it is tiny, uh, volume within the overall capex of the hydrogen plant and even a microgrid. Looking at all of the other assets, energy management system doesn't cost much, but it has a huge effect on uh, the, how the plant runs and essentially what in the end will come out of that pipe. How much hydrogen? So we know, for example, that PEM electrolyzers and, and alkaline ones have different efficiency curves. They need to be controlled in a different way. Um, and this goes also for all of the other assets. Uh, battery, independent of the size, needs to be charged and discharged. So all of the assets in such microgrid hydrogen plant have to be optimized, and this has to be done in real time. Uh, and it is also important that going from the simulation and getting the results or simulated LCOE and LCOH, you get to the energy management system who can actually implement that. Because a lot of the times, the tools that are used for simulation have absolutely nothing to do with the energy management system. So, I'm on time. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, um, I'll take them offline. Thank you.